Hello, this is Art for All People with Vijali. Am I saying your name right? Yes, that's correct. Vijali Hamilton, and she's this amazing artist, and we are doing an interview with her. She's a visionary artist, and welcome. Welcome to Art for All People. Well, I love what you're doing, Thank you. your global work and your efforts, so I'm really happy to uh, see your face. Yay. Beautiful. We're excited. <laughs> I mean, you are... I mean, I, it's so amazing to meet you because, you know, we were at JFK University and you were in the history books, yes, Star Wars history yes. books. <laughs> so it's very exciting for yes. us. Um, so let's talk about um, your, your project, The World Wheel. If you can tell, tell us the history and, and, and then we can go from there. All right. Well, uh, I had worked for many years in California doing environmental sculpture, carving stones, and then involving uh, community, doing it as a ritual, mm -hmm. and then at the end, having some ceremony performance. Uh, sometimes I invite a university out or individual peoples from Los Angeles, and mm -hmm. uh, so I, I tried to combine all the arts. And then I went through a big change in my life, and I I isolated myself in nature for five years wow. uh, and my own self-imposed retreat. I wrote at that time my three of my books that wow. I have. Wow. And uh, during that time, I, I had a dream mm. that I should return to the world and but do it continuing with my work I had done for 10 years, wow. but in a circle. So I saw myself in this dream working in this giant circle around the planet. Wow. wow. And uh, oh, I'm just my, my electricity went off here, so I want to make sure it's still, okay. I'm still plugged in. Uh -huh. um, so then, you know, you have a beautiful dream of an idea and you don't necessarily wake up the next morning and pack your bags. Right. How do I do this? Yeah. Uh -huh. but how do I start? And so it took some time just with that prayer yeah. in myself of how, how do I do this? And then I had this uh, experience where I just saw everything as one ocean of light. Wow. It's as if my perception changed. Yeah. Uh -huh. saw that literally saw that interconnection of life through the plants, animals, uh, and and I felt that that was what my dream was about. It's a way of living. Wow. Vision in a literal way. Right. You know, this life as an artist. Wow. And, and so. Uh, I was just turning a globe I had, and I just was living in a trailer without facilities for those five years in the mountains, and I was turning the globe and thinking about the dream, and I kept my finger on the parallel of where I was in the mountains and turned it, and ah, oh, <laughs> I realized that that, par that parallel was were the countries of my dream. Wow. So then I packed my bags. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And, uh, yeah. I felt I needed to do something in my own environment. In, I was born in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. My little retreat was at the highest point of the Santa Monica Mountains. Uh, it was called Boney Ridge, mm -hmm. isolated part of the mountains. Wow. And, um, so I began, I was invited uh, to, by Frank Lloyd Wright's family. Yeah. Okay. Met, uh -huh. uh, to come up and do the first event on their land. Wow. It's an amazing and So that's kind of how it started. So I created that earth wheel that you experienced there. Beautiful, yeah. Uh -huh. We had, uh, it was in 1980. I started work in 1986. Wow. It was at the Harmonic Convergence mm -hmm. in 1987 when it just it happened to materialize. The wow. It was finished. And then I had involved my uh, theater friends from LA in this ceremony performance and so we we enacted it you know as a ceremony of, of healing the earth mm. at that point and uh, so that started that's beautiful. Beautiful. beautiful and then because I had spent 
time on the reservation at uh, upstate New York, the Seneca mm. Reservation, uh -huh. and, and had studied many years with an elder, Seneca elder, I it felt like, well, that was the next, the next site. So it kind of happened in a very organic, organic way to begin, uh -huh. close, you know, close to me. Uh, where I was living in my own environment and then moving out mm. and then the next then leaving the country was a little, you know, my knees were shaking a little. Wow. <laughs> she went to Spain, uh -huh. you know, on to Europe and, uh -huh. and uh, completed, you know, went to the Middle East and, and India, Tibet, China, Japan, Siberia. Completed the the 12 countries that I saw on the globe and that I felt in my dream. Wow. And then, uh, then coming back to LA, I just, you know, I, my own vision had changed so much and I, I had changed by being in all these cultures uh -huh. because I had, I had, I sold my car, I gave all my things away uh -huh. and just left. I didn't have a base in LA. Uh -huh. How but many years? Like how 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 long is that span? That the first wheel it took seven years, wow. and I just lived in the countries as my home. It was so special Beautiful. since I had no other home. It was like that was my family, you know. Yeah. And I used to live with a family, or I was given a little cottage, or something where I stayed out of the kind of tourist. Uh, part of the country, so really lived with the people, and and, with, and then did my, had my three questions that I asked, and that's kind of how the dialogue would start, you know, not knowing anyone in the country, and, and not planning anything ahead, only knowing that that was the country I was to go to, and it just un, would unfold through friendship, mm, so and just taking one step in front of the other. Uh, not knowing what the next would be, and then I would ask people that I met my three questions. I had asked myself uh, as a as a young person of what you know what who am I? You know what is the deepest part of myself? Mm -hmm. And the second question: well, Why why aren't I living that? You know what is the problem? What's holding me yeah. from the fullest expression mm -hmm. of who I am? And what is the solution? You know, what what will carry me into that that fullness? And so I asked other people these yeah. questions, and that would you know make friendships, and uh -huh. and then I involve. Uh, especially in the beginning, most of the time I worked on the environmental sculptures just myself. Toward the end, I, I would involve more of the community. Mm -hmm. I would teach one or two people how to carve along with me. Okay. But the, okay. the, uh, the ceremony performance was really a collaboration uh, of the community. Okay. So, you know, it would draw everyone in, in some aspect of it. It's like and, a celebration. Uh -huh. And so that, that's, that was the first drill. And when I came back to L.A., I just, I... I it was very hard coming back. Sure, sure. You know, the freeways, and it just seemed like life was isolated, you know, after being in community mm. and in these wonderful places where there was always music and dance. And, uh -huh. and uh, so I just got in my truck and uh, started driving to, to, and praying and weeping, really. You know, where is the place that I should be in? Wow. Where is my body mm -hmm. to decide where I can live everything that I've learned? And so I just found this place in Utah out in the wilderness outside of Moab, mm -hmm. this small castle valley. I found five acres in the wilderness there, and then I, I lived there and built a hogan with just the materials in the area and and there was a cave on the land and one day I went in the cave to meditate as I did every day and I you know I had just heard news of what was happening in the world and praying okay what what do I do now you know what can I do 
to respond to the world, my children that are all over the world. And then I, you know, in meditation, another wheel came to me, and I'm on that now, oh. the second wheel. And the second wheel, uh, well, it started in the Andes of Ecuador, uh -huh. and I worked in the Amazon, uh -huh. that's where the Swar people, uh, and actually started a school for the Swar children, mm -hmm. where they were taught by their elders, uh, using their stories, their creation myth, using their own language, because they were beginning to lose their language and their culture. Mm -hmm. uh, once they went to school, the public schools, they would be speaking Spanish, and kind of being looked down upon as being native people, and so I wanted to support this, the beauty of their culture wow. and themselves by supporting the children. Wow. And so I um, started that, and then I went on to um, Senegal, Africa, mm -hmm. and worked with the women in water, the situation which is very dire mm. in that part of the world, and um, in Australia. And the last country I have been in is the Republic of Georgia. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Kind of a brief, a brief a history. Wow. And I'm still, I, you know, I feel that this is my way to walk peace in the world mm -hmm. as an artist. And, mm -hmm. and um, I plan to just to continue. Nice. Mm -hmm. what, is, um, what was a favorite experience or what was your, was there a moment in time that like, or an ex can you, I mean, there's probably a zillion, but was there one experience that kind of like hit it? Uh, well, I mean, there were so many different experiences. Uh -huh. and it's so precious. I actually make a feature film now with all the images that I've gathered. And I just, you know, I just love each face that I'm reviewing and each story. Uh, there, I'd say that India was, was a, a very special place because I was working, I went, to, I was just on a train going to Shanti Niketan uh, in Bengal mm -hmm. and um, there were these musicians that came on the, the train and I was just so enthralled with their, <laughs> their looks as yeah. well as their music and they invited me to their village and I went to their village and they found a place for me to stay and and uh, and I they didn't they had beautiful sculptures in the village and I found that we don't need another sculpture. Uh -huh. And these bows were very they were called bow musicians, bow minstrels and they would wander mm. and they they um, they had uh, they were so poor and they didn't have any place to stay so I decided to build a house for them mm -hmm. so as I was building in the, with their materials the thatch roof and the, the local mud mm -hmm. uh, they would come by and show me of course exactly how they, they worked their traditional houses and so that just brought us all together in such a beautiful way, working together. I find that's the most wonderful way to get to know people. And so we completed the house and had a ceremony. And now, for the first time, uh, they're teaching their music. They had never done that before. They were just performers. And, and then the village is using it as a school. And so that, that was one just very special time for me. So um, uh, your sculptures, you consider them children? Is that, did I catch that? So, or, well, or babies? I <laughs> people. Yeah. All these, I've, I've you know, been in homes with so many children. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I, I consider the people of the planet oh, my children. Oh, wonderful. And, uh, sculptures, in a sense, are uh, I haven't had a child uh -huh. of my own, uh, <laughs> and my artist has, it's true, has been uh -huh. like my child, yeah, you yeah. know, giving birth. Yeah. I think even if you have a child, you still, I mean, I always consider my artwork as my, you know, babies. <laughs> now that I have my own, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, what in one word does art mean to you? What? In one word, in one word, what does art mean to you? One word or two? It's art, uh, conduit. A conduit, beautiful. A conduit. Art is a conduit. And a conduit of the, oh, hello there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, conduit from, of spirit being manifested in earth. Nice. In stuff, especially because I use stone, so it feels so much like uh, a vehicle to bring spirit out in a form mm -hmm. so that people can feel it. And, and that is, they're also like acupressure, acupuncture mm. points yeah. on Mother Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. These sculptures. So it, it also, I think, activates energy right. that may have gone mm -hmm. quiet and yeah. need, needs some kind of activation. Wow. Like, mm -hmm. like having an acupuncture treatment. Beautiful. Uh, oh, beautiful. Very powerful. And so in that way, too, it's a conduit of the earth energy and wisdom to come out mm -hmm. in a form that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Have you seen at the World Wheel sites that there had been a transformation? Like, did it, things start growing? Did, I mean, obviously, I think people started growing. But did you did you see the earth begin to flourish in these spots? Yes. Yes, it, it seemed to, to bring a lot of activity mm. and energy around the project. And you wow. see, when I leave a country, I like to... I like to start some grassroots organization that mm. carries on nice. whatever has been stimulated so that it can help the community. And, and so you work with mostly indigenous people, right? I work a lot with indigenous people, but not all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it just, whatever unfolds when I'm in the country. Mm -hmm. But so, yes, that's, that's my love because I feel uh, I feel very drawn to indigenous people, and I feel that the knowledge that they have, that it's also leaving very quickly, yes. this is it so is. important for our planet. Yeah, yeah. Our life. Uh -huh. And so I try to support them as much as I can. Mm, I love it. It's beautiful. So your work is a lot about generosity, it seems. Uh, I don't really think of that word. No? Nope. No. <laughs> love. I love, just, you said? It's love. Oh. I just love these people. Yeah. And you love someone, you want to interact with them. Yeah. You want, you want their lives to mm. nourish as well as your own. Wow. I don't, that's, I think of that word more. Love. I love it. Well, that's, you know, Beautiful. we're doing this um, Bridge to the Soul project which is kind of like a, a baby of your project in a way. <laughs> <laughs> so we love it. <laughs> We're aligning. <laughs> and, and with that, how do you feel that art is a bridge to the soul? Or, you know, you've built these bridges. How do, how, how do you feel in, you know, maybe you could talk about that. All right. This, uh, I do feel it's an expression. It, that, that creativity, when it flows in a person, I really feel that that is the soul. That's the spirit of the person taking form in a way that can go out into the world or communicate. Yeah. So I, it's a definite bridge to the soul, both ways, from the soul to out to other people's souls and yeah. other people's lives. That's beautiful. Did you, you know, I mean, amazing. Did you ever have a resistance to going in? Did people resist it at all, or it was all amazing? It's a, it, I didn't have a lot of resistance. Cool. But as human nature, you expose yourself to anything that comes. You know, there's always uh, difficult situations that may arise, or maybe one person uh, who has, uh, wants to kind of get into the fray just for their ego need or some personal need mm -hmm. that causes a little mm -hmm. rift. Sometimes that happens. And usually, if, and usually working together through the arts, it stimulates 
a fear in people because they put themselves out in a way they haven't before. They want to, and then their own fear comes in. Uh, so all of that is stirred up, which is good because you can't heal unless all of the person is opened and stirred up. So I just accept that, and usually by the end, everything kind of comes together, and there's a, a real healing with whatever has come up. Wow, that's beautiful. So talk about that more. Art is healing, obviously. And so the way it heals is through? Well, it, it's through touching the soul of the person, touching very deeply hmm. into the person or the community. The community in the sense is a person and that has you know, fears and hopes, uh-huh. just like individuals. And uh, so it opens up the art, the process of working together in the art, opens up the community, the individuals, mm-hmm. and, and that's a, a healing when you're opened mm-hmm. like that. I mean, you become vulnerable sometimes, you know, as I said, sometimes fear or anxiety mm-hmm. arises, but that's part of healing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that art is a wonderful uh, a wonderful way to do that because uh, it's impersonal in a sense, but yet it's so. I feel art is so deep and so spiritual in its essence mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. that it's a wonderful tool. So wonderful tool in the sense too of, of crossing borders, crossing nice. political borders, yeah. religious borders, social borders, economical yeah. borders. Mm-hmm. You know. I've had no problem with any of these uh, forms because the art, you know, it's not, uh, uh, it doesn't become offensive, like if you're you're presenting uh, one religion against the other, you know, as being better than the other, then it comes tension. But with the art, it's, you can accept all expression and all people. Mm-hmm. And it's not threatening. Yeah, it's beautiful. Wow. Um, so, artists for all people. <laughs> <laughs> for all people. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So, and then uh, this is kind of like the big question why do you think transformative art is so needed now in this time? Oh, yes. It is because we're we're having a very hard time in history and on this planet. Mm-hmm. There's so much uh, destruction in the earth, but because of our lifestyles, and also because of greed and power, uh, pushing uh, pushing ways of life that are destroying the earth. Uh, and it's and also there's misunderstanding between cultures which doesn't need to be there but because of that you know there's so much death and destruction mm-hmm. among uh, people and in our cultures as well as the earth herself uh, so this is a point this is a moment in our evolution here on the planet that needs some help, needs some nourishment and very clear thinking and art as we talked about, which is it not uh, not invasive in the sense that it disturbs any religion or any culture. Mm-hmm. It's open mm-hmm. to everyone. Uh, this is a tool that at this moment I think is so important and I love what you're doing and I just you know I just want to love you and support you (laughs) thank you (laughs) because that's what it's about it's it's about encouraging all people to create not just one person having an interesting project but for all people to delve into themselves mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. spiritual sense, mm-hmm. letting that come out in some form yeah. that can affect our planet, can affect the world. Mm-hmm. 
and that's what you're doing. Yeah, and that's and what I, you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel that we need to encourage everyone to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, our <laughs> biggest mission. Everybody it is. <laughs> it's important. And I mean, I think what you said about the fear rising is really, it's part of the healing process. Because a lot of people, when they're creating, I can't do this, you know. We do a lot of transformative art workshops. Yoga, yeah. And, um, a lot. I, I, I'm, I'm not an artist. And I think when you just say, that's part of the process, you know, just let it flow. It's natural. And it's yeah. fine for that to happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. It has to. It has to. It has to do that. But then it will be healed by coming out. I know. It's amazing. Through the art, but through creating. Yeah. Through it's creating. really fantastic. So you were just on um, the Equinox. You were in New York. Can you tell us about yeah, that virtual? Peace and, ceremony. And you met our friend Jean. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was so happy. And oh, good. I looked at some of her photos. They were so incredible. Gorgeous. Yeah. She, it's very special photographer. Yeah. yeah she's amazing. She's, yeah. She's quite she a friend. Is, and a lovely person. I was so happy that she came. Yeah. I'm happy. So what was the, it was a, 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 a ritual for peace, and, and what was, why that area? Well, it's, it's a rock. social park, yeah. uh-huh. and at, it was at the Summit Rock uh-huh. at the park, which is the highest point of the park, which is not that high, <laughs> but it's the highest point, which is symbolic of being kind of at the summit of our time right here on the planet, uh-huh. and the stone, uh, Somehow it's like a, a touchstone of ourselves, of the possibility of peace. And uh, there's a little story that came in that location. Uh, it was called Seneca Village. Mm. Uh, it was around this ro- rock. Uh-huh. And it was first the African American people who had become free from slavery. Uh, they wanted to vote. They were. Uh, people had paid, made enough money to be able to vote, I think it was $250, you know, and they wanted to start a community, and they invited into this community uh, people, immigrants from Europe, especially Germany uh-huh. and uh, Ireland. Uh-huh. And uh, so they had this peaceful community with three churches, their graveyard, a school for the children. Mm-hmm. It was integrated. And uh, then, uh, although I love Central Park, I mm-hmm. think it's saving grace of New York, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But it, it, the way it happened is that they were pushed out. Their land mm-hmm. was taken to uh, you know, make the park in that wow. place. So, wow. Whatever that story was, or what they did with their lives when they were forced to move, uh, you know, I, I think it's a story that's very important to think about in this age of yes. you know little cell, uh, little towns, little groups of people that are working and not being recognized by the greater powers. Mm. Uh, are not being supported Mm -hmm. and so I thought it was very symbolic to have the fall equinox Mm. which is the moment when we have equal day and equal equal night night. night to take that balance and harmony of that moment and this story you know uh, take it through ceremony to take it out into the world of a prayer that we find that harmony with each other and the planet. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. It's amazing, amazing what you do. <laughs> what would you say, you know, I think, like we said, artists for all people, how can somebody do this on their own? Do you, do you ever encourage people to, well, we feel, I think we all in the circle feel art is ritual <laughs> and art is about love, um, but how would you suggest somebody do, does it on their own? How do you, how do you, do you, did you read books or, you know, did you just um, invent the ceremonies or intuition, dreams, things like that? that- uh, well, for me, yeah. uh, I mean, I have a background in ceremony. I was oh. a, a Vedanta nun for 10 years oh. and learned the traditional puja. Oh. I was very young. I was 14 and left the convent when I was 25. 
And I, I did learn ceremony, it was oh, traditional. Yeah. Um, but what, what I do, I don't feel that people have to uh, do a traditional ceremony. I think the ceremony of the moment, of what is really called, what is in your heart, what that moment, what is around you, the particular shapes or where you find your place in life to create a ceremony of hope. Mm. Uh, that's just genuine from the heart. I think that's all that's needed. We can we can get our inspiration. Uh, I mean, I live with Native people and love Native people so much, uh, and have been in many many ceremonies. And um, so I'm you know filled with experience. But at the moment of ceremony, it has to be real for me. You know, really coming from my heart in that moment was appropriate. Nice. Aww. Beautiful. Wonderful. So we're about to take this adventure, Bridge to the Soul. Can you give us some advice <laughs> from a person who's been around the world doing art? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, my advice is just to have faith in your vision uh -huh. that it's real. Thank you. Uh -huh. and, uh, and only and go step by step. I mean, that's what, I mean, I can talk about this now after what, this has been 27 years. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, when I started, I mean, I didn't know how it was going to end or what yeah. form. It's just like, okay, I'm you here. You were doing it. I'm the mountains. I've been invited to the right land. And I'll start. And, you know, you just uh, let it grow uh -huh. in a very natural way around you. Uh -huh. Nice. And, yeah. and just have have faith that your vision is real and that what you need for it will come. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I always feel uh, I may not have a big bank account, but I always have a roof over my head. And it seems like tools or whatever is needed to do the work comes. Always. And yeah. it may not be more than that, but that's all that anyone needs. Yeah. They're like to do what they really love. Yeah. They screwed in their stomach and a roof over their head, you know, out shelter out of rain and snow. Mm -hmm. uh, and just move forward. Mm -hmm. wow. And and just have faith that uh, I one thing that I learned those so many years, especially not having any base for the first seven years uh -huh. is that uh, I felt so held by the universe and provided by the universe. Wow. But, and not, and I left any kind of idea that, okay, I do something for, good for you and you need to pay back. So to, for that, all that kind of tit for tat. Nice, nice. Uh, for, for just give them. Mm. And, and the universe gives back and it may be given back to you in surprise not from the person you give something, or the community even that you give, but it, it comes back in, in its own way and time. Wow. And so just simply give and walk in your own truth and clarity with the faith that, that the universe is taking care of you. As long as you are honest in your own path, Mm -hmm. You're provided for. Wow! Thank you. Yay. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any last words that you want to talk about, or anything? Your future projects. So you said you're in the wheel right now, right? Where, where's your next place? Oh, most probably the Himalayas. Oh, like in can I go? Uh, <laughs> but right now, my exciting thing is, is just before I left New York. I was able to buy 40 acres outside of Santa Fe. It just happened to be that it was a very low price. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. And so I'm going to start a Whirlwheel Center. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. Wow. And so I'm, uh, at the moment, I don't have a penny to put anything on it, but I, I'm thinking of uh, when I can put a yurt. Uh, so there'll be a gathering place. Oh, 
and uh, I, I would like to teach art as a spiritual path. Uh-huh. Because I feel that that's really the base of it, uh-huh. so that other people can be inspired, you know, to to find their own unique path in the creative world. Wow. And um, so to be putting energy into letting that center evolve. Nice. And, and then it, maybe next year, we'll see. Wow. And I don't plan to So you're that finally just... rooting somewhere. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so, uh, well, we'd love to. I mean, we want to do. We would love to see you in person. Like, so we'll do a road trip, and maybe we could do yoga, yogurt at the Wheel Center. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Let's I see it. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. I'm gonna turn off the camera. Thank you so much, and I'm gonna turn off the camera. And um, thank you. Thank you. 